Okay, so this is going to get a little interesting. It's a little weird, but it'll be okay. We'll be good. I've done this a million times before. Can't be that hard. Yeah. Hi guys, it's Rach. So, I would say a long time no see, but by the time that this video goes up, you've probably seen other videos from me because I'm planning on putting up my hauls first probably, but this is the first time I am actually physically sitting in front of a camera and talking to you guys in over a month. So, been a long time, feeling a little bit nervous, not gonna lie, but I thought since I've put some makeup on my face before I film a whole heap of hauls for you guys, which hopefully you guys will have already have seen and have been really enjoying, um, I thought I would demo some of those products in a little sort of just chatty get ready with me video. I say little, it will probably go on forever, but hopefully it won't be too boring and you'll get to see some of the products that I have picked up in action. So. I'm going to start with this one here that I'm shaking around. This is the LeBlanc Base Detente. I, I honestly can't read it, but it's from Chanel. It is their, it's, I think it's like an illuminating base. It's light revealing brightening makeup base. Broad, broad spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen is in there. So I'm going to shake that up. I really like the packaging of this. Any of the Chanel products that have this kind of packaging are just so convenient in that they're great to travel with, they're just lightweight, they're compact, don't leak, no mess, no fuss. Absolutely love it. So that's what it looks like there. It's like a light pink kind of colour. And I'm just going to use this a bit like a primer. It's very light and brightening and gives you like a, a dewy type finish. The foundation I'm going to use, I think I'm going to go with this one from Tarte. This is their Full Coverage Amazonian Clay Airbrush Foundation. I got the shade Light Medium Beige. I've used this once. So far, I think the shade is probably okay for me. Um, maybe slightly darker than my skin tone, but it seems to blend in quite well. And sorry, the sun has just changed, <laughs> disappeared. So if the lighting changes, I apologize. I am using natural light and I haven't set up my camera in so long. I had no idea what I was doing. I feel, really feel completely out of it, but I didn't buy the brush that came with it. That was my bad. So I'm just going to use this little Kabuki uh, brush from, I think this is a Royal and Langnickel one. And this is what this looks like here. Oops. Whoa. A lot comes out. You'd be surprised. Let's see how this goes. Ooh. Whoa. Lots of powder, Rachel. Let's blend this out. This is definitely probably my summer shade. I've found that it seems to be quite forgiving in the one time that I have tried this out. It is so hard shopping and trying to find shades when you're sort of buying so much at once and you don't have a lot of time. I bought my Sephora stuff sort of in between doing one tour and then going to the next tour and I knew we had to go to lunch so I was like really on a mission and trying to be fast because I had about an hour but I think I did okay and this gives surprisingly good coverage I am really quite impressed with this okay so that is on that has given me quite good coverage on its own I still have some spots and usually I would put concealer on before I put my powder product on but I did that the other day and I found that when I buffed it in that I almost moved the concealer so I wanted to see how putting concealer on top of it would go because if you kind of pinpoint I'm hoping that it will still kind of work okay so the concealer that I'm going to use Another new product, this is the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Concealer. I got the shade Light 18, which I believe is the second lighter shade there. Don't quote me on that, but I have vague memory that that was it. And I think that this is a pretty good match for me. I love the packaging of this too because it is a nice little squeezy tube, easy to just pop out on the back of your hand. No wands, no pumps, nothing that can get contaminated or you can really control how much you get out of the tube. I'm just going to use, this is just the little Real Techniques detailer brush. So I'm going to be really kind of specific because I don't want the mineral powder to go cakey on me. But unfortunately my skin didn't like traveling. I loved traveling. My skin, not so much. 
and it's having a little bit of a freak out at the moment. I'm kind of almost over it, but I still have some residual blemishes. And I'm going to test this out under my eyes. I just realized that I did that. I don't know if this one is supposed to be an under eye concealer, but it feels quite creamy. So you know what? We're going to give it a go. I've been really into just concentrating my concealer under my eyes, just to this inner corner bit and just a tiny bit here, not sort of doing the whole big under eye brightening highlighting thing lately. I don't know why, I don't know if it's, I'm just lazy or I just, I've been just liking this better and I seem to find that my dark circles look a lot lighter just by concentrating the concealer only in this small area. So the concealer itself, I really quite like it. It seems to cover really well. It wasn't too sticky or tacky, which is kind of what I expected it to be since it is such a heavy duty or supposed to be a really heavy duty concealer. It seemed to blend quite well, but it did cover. I'll have to see if it creases sort of throughout the day under my eyes, but so far it seems to be um, quite nice. So I really, really like that as well. What are we going to do next? Let's do a little bit of a blush. I'm going to take the, oh, do I want, oh, do I want blush? Yeah, I think I'm going to go blush. This is the Milani Baked Blush. This is one of their matte blushes, and it is in Delizio, Delizio Pink. I don't think I'm saying that right, but it's number 10. Really, really gorgeous, bright blush. I got a couple of these Milani ones, and I've had a couple before from this, the Baked Blush range. Really, really like them. So let's see how this one goes. <clears throat> I'm going to start off with a little bit because I have no idea how pigmented they are. And the light tap of the blush of the brush, sorry, seems to give some definite colour payoff. So I say use a really light hand with this kind of blush. It does look quite scary in the pan, but it actually looks quite pretty on the cheeks. Okay, since we're on cheeks at the moment, I think I'm going to stick to cheeks. I picked up the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder in the shade Medium. This one I got from the Space & K stand at in Nordstrom. It's one of like, the last purchases I picked up. I think on the last day I just randomly stumbled across it in Nordstrom at Santa Monica and I just couldn't resist because I hadn't picked up any Kevin Aquan products on my entire trip. I'm just going to use the number 2 brush from Wayne Goss and just concentrate a little bit on the backs of my cheekbones here. Again, this is one of the ones that I have managed to open up and use a couple of times and I've got to say, I'm a fan. It's just a really nice, cool toned colour. Great for sort of, I guess I would say, it seems, I have quite light skin, I mean, honestly, and it seems to work for me. Maybe if you're really, really crazy pale, although I know I've seen some really super pale people use these and this and they quite liked it. So definitely light to medium skins, and it seems to be buildable too, so maybe if you're really, really dark, this probably wouldn't quite work for you, but I think it's a really good all-rounder product. It's the only shade I saw. I don't know if there is like a light and a dark given that this one's called medium. I don't know enough about the Kevin Aquan range. Somebody will probably tell me in the comments but I have the medium and I quite like it as just a nice way to give you, see, a little bit of cheekbone. And I might just take a little bit down the side of my nose too. Now that that's done, should we do eyebrows, I think? I picked up a few eyebrow products because I've got to say, eyebrows, one of my favourite things, eyebrows and concealers, I'm definitely addicted to. So I picked up the Hourglass Arch Pencil. This one I picked up in the shade Soft Brunette. I think I was going to get medium or just brunette, but they'd sold out of that, so I thought I'd grab this one. It does have a little spoolie on the end. It also has quite a large tip, which I thought was quite interesting given that all the other eyebrow products that I seem to be gravitating towards seem to be getting smaller and smaller with their tips. So I thought I would see how this would go. It does seem to make doing your eyebrows a lot quicker because it's like so large. It's almost the width, perfect width of my eyebrow just to be able to go like that and just shoot through. But you do have that straight edge as well. See, look, I feel like that's already done. That's like one of the quickest eyebrow products I have ever used. It's really, really cool. I think this would be great for somebody who 
just want something that is quick and easy. If you're somebody who wants to like precisely draw in every hair stroke, that's probably, this one wouldn't be for you because it's not that precise, but I really like it. Okay, just going to brush back through that to spread it all out and then I'm going in with one of my Anastasia or Anastasia of Beverly Hills products that I picked up. This is the Clear Brow Gel. I was really, really excited about this one because I love the fact that the packaging is not see-through so you don't have to look at the gross gel once it starts changing colour because it gets all the leftover brow product going back in it. I know it's gross to think about, which is why I like the fact that you don't have to see it in this. And it seems to go on quite nicely too. It doesn't apply too much product. Sometimes I find with brow gels that it feels like you're getting these big gloops of clear gel all over, but that seemed to go on quite nice and lightly. For eyes lately, I haven't been wearing a lot of eyeshadow. It's been definitely one of the things that's been a trend in my makeup, I guess, look this month. I did pick up a few eyeshadow products, one of them being this baby here. This I looked everywhere for and I'll definitely tell the story of that at a later or in a different video, but I kind of want to do a video dedicated to the Naked 3 palette specifically, so I don't think I'm going to use that today. What I am going to use is just this little Wet n Wild Color Icon Trio and this is in the shade 30, 380B Walking on Eggshells. And I happened to cut myself really badly on my finger trying to get into this palette, so that was annoying. But the um, shades itself look quite pretty. They seem to be all like a satin finish. So I'm just going to go for a really light eye look. If I can find an eyeshadow brush. Okay, I'm going to take this first brow bone shade. This look isn't going to be anything crazy. I just thought it'd be nice to chat to you guys. And demo some of these products. That is quite pigmented, that shade. I'm just applying this all over the lid. Probably should have applied a primer. And I did buy one, but oh well. We'll see how these go primer free. A little bit of that brow bone shade just on the tip underneath my brow too. I'm taking the eyelid colour and I'm just going to apply this just on the outside half of the lid and just blend that up into the crease a little bit. Same brush too, this is the Sigma Tapered Blending E35. If any of you are wondering, great for applying eyeshadow when you just want it to be all blown out and smoky sort of straight away. Okay, I'm going to just lightly tap the end of the brush into the centre crease colour here. Tap off the excess and I'm just going to start working this into the outer part of the crease as well. Okay, on a smaller brush, this is the Sigma Exact Blending number 32. I'm going to take more of that crease colour and I'm just going to run this underneath my lower lash line. Same brush, I'm also going to deepen up my crease slightly. I'm going to go back into that Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder in Medium since that palette doesn't have anything that's really matte. And I'm just going to run this right in the crease. I really do like making my products multi-use. And bronzers and contour powders are great eyeshadows. Okay, I'm going to pop a little bit of eyeliner on. I have been tending to go towards more liquid liner lately, but I thought I would try this. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Pencil in Corrupt. Really pretty brown shade. I'm just going to really make a thin line of this. Really sort of smudge it into my lashes. And I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit with the number eight oops and I just dropped it the number eight Wayne Goss brush
Now for mascara, I did buy a whole heap of drugstore mascaras, but I kind of want to keep them in the packaging until I can show them in some hauls. So I thought I would break open the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes mascara because this one's in a box so I can put it back into the box. You guys will just have to unfortunately deal with my awkward putting on mascara face. It's just, it's so awkward putting on mascara on camera, I'm not gonna lie. that it doesn't seem to give me a lot of length but it definitely gives me volume and separation and I found like I could get really close to the lash line without getting it on my eyelids which I have a tendency to have a lot of trouble with when it comes to certain mascara ones so so far I like that I don't know what lip product I'm going to put on straight away but I do have a um, lip liner from Tarte this is their Amazonian clay universal lip liner and it is in the shade doesn't have a shade I'm guessing it's just because it's universal I think on the website it does, does say nude on Sephora website so we'll see seems to go on quite it's creamy like it's easy, it's easy to apply but it's not so creamy that you feel like it's slipping and it's quite a nice nude color I like that over the top of that um, okay let's try one of these this these are from L'Oreal. I've seen people talk about them. I have no idea what the exact name is. I don't think they're out in Australia yet. This is number 403 Purple Prelude. We're going to see. I haven't had a chance to try this yet, but it looks quite purple, so let's see. It has quite a nice fruity scent to it. I'm impressed already. It feels very, very creamy too. Some nice colour payoff without being like completely opaque and it's a nice purple shade too because I am not one for straight out purples I don't think they suit me but this one is probably as purple as I would get and it doesn't feel sticky at all I don't think it's a stain but I really really like that I picked up one more of these I might have to try and order some online and hopefully they'll come out in Australia soon because hmm, Oh, I like it. Okay, guys, so that was my little chit-chat get ready with me. It wasn't really much of a chit-chatting, but hopefully you got to see some of the products being demoed, and I hope that you enjoyed it. I will do more of these type videos once I sort of have hauled a lot of these products so you guys can see them in action. Definitely let me know what products you've seen so far in hauls that you want to see and um, anything that you want to see reviews on and stuff like that. I love hearing from you. It definitely helps me get ideas of what kind of videos I'm going to film in the future. And welcome to all my new subscribers. I probably have already said that, um, but I know a lot of you guys popped up while I was away and um, I just, I'm happy that you came join my family here on YouTube. So other than that, I'm going to go. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye. I smell